This has been one of my most requested videos, and, well, it's not too hard to see why. This place was a big part of many of our childhoods, and I'm sure several people have fond memories of shopping here. Toys R Us was America's toy store, and they were pretty much a staple in shopping malls all across the country. They also had many standalone stores that featured bright colors and displays. They would often be paired with one of their other stores, such as Babies R Us or Kids R Us. This company would thrive all throughout the 80s and 90s, and at their peak, they would have over 800 locations in the United States, and more than 1,500 worldwide. Toys R Us would come up against strong competition in the early 2000s, and after a few years of declining sales, they would become a victim of a leveraged buyout. All in all, their debt would just be too much to overcome. Many of the old stores have been repurposed, but with over 800 former locations in the country, there is still no shortage of abandoned Toys R Us stores. To get to the beginning, we'll have to go all the way back to 1948. That year, Charles Lazarus opened a furniture store called Children's Bargain Town in Washington, D.C. This furniture store was very much successful. However, Lazarus thought he could make more of a profit if he could diversify and sell things such as toys. So he would do just that. In 1957, he would open a toy store in Maryland called Toys R Us. The logo was always unique, featuring bright colors and a backwards R. It was said that Lazarus himself designed a logo, but he wanted to make it more like a kid designed it, so he used bright colors and turned the R the opposite direction. This first location was successful in the 60s and 70s. They would sell popular toys such as G.I. Joe and Star Wars action figures. Toys R Us would grow to four locations, and they would actually be sold in 1966 to a company called Interstate Department Stores. However, as part of the sales agreement, Charles Lazarus would stay on as CEO. Anywho, in 1969, the world would be introduced to one of the most iconic company mascots in history. His name? Jeffrey the Giraffe. At this time, the company was pulling in around $12 million in sales annually. Things seemed to be going pretty good for the company, but behind the scenes, the parent company was struggling financially. In fact, Interstate would file for bankruptcy in 1974. As part of the bankruptcy, Lazarus would be put in charge of restructuring the company. So to raise money to continue growing the company, they would go public in 1978. Toys R Us would seem to be back on track by 1980, as that time, the company grew to 100 locations. So with a growing number of stores, they would be one of the first companies to implement an electronic inventory system. Anyways, in 1983, they would spin off another company called Kids R Us. This company would primarily sell children's clothing, but it never really got off the ground. In 1985, they had 250 stores and $4.7 billion in sales. They would just continue to grow into the 1990s, and by 1994, they would have over 1,000 locations worldwide with about 600 of those being inside the United States. In 1996, they would open yet another company. This time, it was called Babies R Us. And as the name suggests, they pretty much sold anything a baby would need. Anyways, in 1997, they were still the number one toy store. In fact, nearly 25% of all toys sold in the United States were sold by Toys R Us. But that would soon change. ToysRUs.com launched in 1998, but more notably that same year, Walmart became the number one toy seller. Walmart most likely took over that spot, given the fact they had around 1,800 stores at that point, and they could afford to sell at a lower price. That's mostly because toys isn't their main business. Anyways, by the year 2000, Toys R Us was still doing fairly well they would grow to around 750 U.S. locations that year. They would also start to remodel and update some of their older stores. In 2001, they would open the largest toy store in the world. It was located in Manhattan. It featured a three-story Ferris wheel and an animatronic T-Rex. I have to say, this store did look pretty impressive, 
but it seemed to be more for show, as this location was never very profitable. By 1994, the company had around $11 billion in sales annually. Also by this point, all the Kids R Us locations would be closed. Here's where things start to decline. In 2005, three private investors would take over Toys R Us via a leveraged buyout. And if you follow my channel, you know these usually don't work out too well. Anyway, this purchase would cost investors $6.6 billion. The bad news is, they had to borrow $5.8 billion of that. So yeah, they were pretty far in debt at this point. And as part of the sales agreement, they would have to close around 140 locations, dropping them down to 700 stores in the United States. So fast forward to 2009. They would buy up some competition, starting with eToys and Toys.com. They would also purchase New York's high-end toy store, FAO Schwartz. They were still holding their own by 2012, with sales around $12 billion. However, they were reporting a profit of just $250 million, which was way down from previous years. So from this point on, Toys R Us wouldn't be very profitable, as by 2013, they're reporting a $210 million loss. In 2015, they would close FAO Schwartz. Along with that, they would start to close their underperforming locations. Things are getting pretty bad at this point, and they would end up filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in September of 2017. Pretty much, they would need a really good holiday season to stay afloat. But that didn't happen. In fact, sales would come in $250 million below their worst case projections. So on March 14, 2018, Toys R Us filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy, and soon after began a liquidation sale. And with that, all 740 U.S. locations would now be closed. Is closing its doors today. John Shumo has more on the end of Toys R Us. It thrilled generations of children. This is the Lego set that I got. But the shelves at Toys R Us stores across the country are now bare. It's something that I grew up with, and to see it now empty, it's just sad and heartbreaking. Charles Lazarus opened his first store in 1948, selling baby furniture in Washington, D.C. A few years later, he turned his attention to toys. But that's not the end of the story here. In 2019, a brand was actually created called True Kids, which is an acronym for Toys R Us, and they would actually open two new locations, one in New Jersey and one in Texas. Granted, these new locations were much smaller, and they were a little different in design, but hey, they were Toys R Us. However, they would both close during the pandemic, and they would never reopen. But there is a little more to the story. In January 2021, Another location was open, this time at American Dream Mall in New Jersey. This time, they took a different approach. This would be a large two-story location, and it seems to be doing fairly well. So, hopefully, we will see more Toys R Us in the future. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you found this one interesting. And hey, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to come out with more and more content. So anyways, I will see you all on the next video. Thank you so much for watching.